Hi everyone, welcome back. A while ago I built this radio flow settler and I thought I'd give you an update on how it's been working. These videos are brought to you in part by our Patreon contributors. Our top contributors are TrueAquaponics.com, GreenLifePlanet.net, GlassBottleOutlet.com, and GrowPockets.com. Thanks for your support. I think one of the top comments that I've gotten on that other video, which I will post somewhere up there or over here, wherever it goes, um, that there was no cover on it. Even though I did say in the original video I was going to put a cover on, but here it is. It's essentially the old tank uh, with the middle of it cut out and I just lowered the cover down just to, to fit on here. Uh, this is just an access hole from the original cover. It doesn't serve much purpose, but it makes it easy just to peek inside and see what's going on. And of course the cover just pops off. Nothing fancy with it at all. So here's the inlet from the tank. It comes in, I can control the flow uh, with this valve here. It goes in and drops in. You can see I do get a little bit of algae growth just because it stays so wet in here. And this blue does not block all the light, so um, I do get a little bit of algae uh, growing in this. It doesn't bother me at all. I know some people get a little freaked out with uh, algae in their system, but as long as it's not floating around in the water, I'm not overly concerned. A little bit here and there, no big deal. Overall, I'm really happy with um, having the water come in over the top and then uh, drain down into uh, my little diffuser plate here. Um, a lot of uh, these designs, you'll see that they'll come in with the pipe through the side of the tank and then it'll come up and then sort of overflow into there. And I really wanted to try to avoid that, um, really because what happens is a lot of the suspended solids, as they settle out, you have them, it settles out onto the pipe that's going through there. So why bother uh, punch an extra hole in the side of the tank when I can just come in over the top and drain it in. And that's worked out really, really well for me. So the water's coming in, hits against that diffuser plate, it spreads out, and it really helps to keep from the getting the whole column here uh, turbulent so it just helps to absorb some of that energy of water coming in. You can see there is some uh, bio slime that builds up on it and some areas where there isn't. It basically builds up a little bit, breaks off and then goes down uh, through the filtration. So I don't clean any of this out, I just let the slime build up and then every so often it'll just uh, it'll break off. You can see my support bracket here that I just welded together. Rust-Oleum is not the greatest paint to use, obviously. Um, it's just going to keep rusting out. Maybe someday, if it becomes a problem, I'll just replace it with some stainless steel bracket, but for now, the, the steel will do fine. As the water works its way back up to the water column, it's going over this ring of weirs and overflows, so overall, the water is being distributed across the entire uh, perimeter of the tank, which really helps to make sure that it doesn't cause any turbulence within the, the main water column, allowing um, all those suspended solids to settle out. And then it just works its way around and eventually drains out, um, out through the uh, two inch drain in the side of the tank. You can see in the weir, there's a little bit of algae or bio slime that builds up in it. Not really a big deal, but eventually it does collect in there and raise up the water level. Um, so about every six months or so, I just go through and, and clean this up. It doesn't take much. I'll just use my bottle brush or something and clean all this out. Same thing in the drain channel. I get a little bit of bio slime building up in there. And if it doesn't break off, it just goes into the rest of the system. Uh, so again, every few months I'll go through with a bottle brush and clean out that channel. So let's take a little swim inside the tank. Along the center stilling well, uh, you will see some algae. It just slowly accumulates in there. Again, the light um, just is hitting that and it builds up. It's not causing any harm, so I just leave it alone. And then on the, the walls of the tank, I will get a little bit of debris that settles in. It's not a big deal. It does a fairly good job uh, knocking down. And then as we 
go down into the bottom center here. Uh, there'll be more and more debris as we work our way down. Now this is right at the base of the column. So it um, essentially just falls right down inside of the cone. And I do keep a, a small koi in here, which I'm not sure if we're gonna see him once I scare him a bit. And uh, he actually does a really good job just going around picking at the sides and knocking down the debris. So essentially I never uh, clean this uh, tank out at all uh, down lower. And up near the, the upper areas, there's almost nothing uh, sticking to the walls at all. Cause that, by that time, the water is so clear. Uh, there's just nothing else. So most of the uh, solids you'll see way down at the bottom. Out of the bottom of the tank, the uh, solids do work their way through this pipe and into the mineralization tank. And at some point I'll cover that in a little bit more detail. I'm not 100% satisfied with how it's working, so I think I'm gonna make a few design changes to that one. And while I'm at it, I might as well uh, clean off the sides of the tank and the weir a little bit. Once I start brushing off some of the stuff stuck to the side of the tanks, it's gonna muddy up the water pretty good. So when I'm all done with that, I'll let the water settle out for another 20 minutes or so before I let it start up because I don't want all this uh, flushing into the rest of the, uh, the system. And of course, while I'm at it, I'll clean off the weir. And I seriously haven't cleaned this since uh, last fall, so it's been a good six months. It just doesn't need to be cleaned that often. Just a quick peek of the stilling well while it's out of the tank. You can see on the inside, the top area, gets a little bit of algae growth because that's above the diffusion plate. And then once you go down inside, it's just a little bit of bio slime that builds up. It's super thin and it's just a tiny bit that's on there. So nothing sticking to this at all. And on the outside, it's a little bit different, it's sort of interesting. Right at the top layer here that's always under the water, you're getting that algae growing in here. And you can see it's a, it was puffy in the water, but there's not much on here. It's just sort of a little bit of a stringy type algae. And then as you work your way down lower and there's less light in the tank, you can see it's basically just uh, bio slime that builds up on it down along the bottom. So overall, just the top foot, 15 inches or so, um, has a little bit of algae growth on it. All right, now that we're all cleaned up in there, we just throw this back in. Put our diffusion plate back on. Then after about uh, 10 minutes or 20 minutes of let this settle down after disturbing it, I'll turn on the water again and uh, let this start uh, settling out all the solids out of the fish tank again. So that's about it for this. Uh, this has been a really nice piece of equipment to have for getting the solids out of the system. It works exactly as I anticipated. Everything settles out. It works its way into the mineralization tank so I don't have to deal with any of the, the fuss of having to uh, drain my solids out every day or twice a day on some larger systems. Uh, so overall it's been really, really nice. Once again, thanks for watching.